this is a classic capital budgeting internal rate of return crossover rate question that you may see on your exam as a undergrad studying an internal finance course or even an MBA candidate studying a finance graduate type of class. So how do we solve these questions? How do we do it quickly? Because this is something that you will see on a final exam. This is typically a final exam multiple choice. In this video, not only will I show you how to find a crossover point and how to do so effectively and quickly, but also I will show you how to visualize the relationship between two different projects, especially by using their IRRs or NPV and the crossover point. A lot of stuff, but trust me, after this video, you will be a pro. You'll know everything to do, really, and how to do other questions that may not be the same on an exam. So let's jump right into it. So in this project, or in this question, sorry, Jake and Sarah are looking into two mutually exclusive projects. Project Beta, okay, and Project Sigma, all righty. Now, Project Beta, it requires a $2,500 initial investment, but it will return perpetual cash flows of $1,230 per year. On the other hand, Project Sigma, it'll cost $3,750 at, you know, an onset, but it's going to return perpetual cash flows of $1,695 per year forever. Okay. And we want to know, well, I will even highlight this in red because it's our mission. We want to know what's the crossover point for these two projects. When will the NPV of Project Beta will be equal to the NPV of Project Sigma? That's what the crossover point is. All right. And we're going to jump through all of the different notions that you need to know here. Now, what I want you to remember, we've highlighted this in another video and within my crash courses that are also available on YouTube. But the crossover point is a very interesting point because that's the point at which the NPV of project beta will be equal to the NPV of project sigma. All right, let's go ahead and write that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to give you a spiel on what the NPV crossover rate really what it's all about. So let me maybe write it right here. Sorry if I'm taking my time. I just really want you to get a sense of what this is. So crossover rate. The reason why this is important is because this will highlight and really give you context and perspective on how to maneuver your way through this notion of the crossover rate, but also how do we do it? How do we get there? And how do we get there? Well, that's through the incremental cash flow method, which we're going to highlight in a second. But I want you to really put this in perspective. Okay. The crossover point is the point at which the NPV of project A is equal to the NPV of project B. Okay, for example, let's say the NPV of project A was $15, then it would mean that the NPV of project B is $15, right? That's one way to look at it. You could also say, well, all right, well, if that's true, this means that the NPV of project B less the NPV of project A, well, that would be equal to zero, right? Think about it. 15 minus 15, well, that gives you zero, okay? That's what it means, okay? That's a really strong way to visualize the relationship, what, the relationship of two projects and PVs when they're equal to each other. So by definition, if NPV A is equal to NPV B, we could then say the NPV of project B less the NPV of project A will give you zero. And within the chapter of capital budgeting, this notion, this concept, this idea, when you see zero and you see NPV, this should tell you something very, very, very interesting. Because remember, remember this, I'll highlight it for you. Remember when we used to say that when NPV is equal to zero, we have a very specific point. We have a very cool point. When the NPV is equal to zero, it's a point where K is equal to the IRR, right? It's a discount rate that allows you to have a NPV is equal to zero. It's a very specific discount rate. It's a very important discount rate, and we coined it as being the internal rate of return. Now, in this case, look at that. We have the difference of two cash flows, right? We have the difference of project A to project B, and we know that project B minus project A will give you zero. So what's really interesting is that, well, think about it. When these two projects have the same NPV, it's actually at a point at which their K will be equal to each other. It's a specific discount rate. And that specific discount rate will give you a difference of these two cash flows equal to zero. 
So that's really cool. Because what we can do, knowing this, right? Knowing this, we could say, well, okay, the difference between these two cash flows, right, will give us a specific amount for every single year. And that specific amount, when we find its NPV, when we set it to zero, that's going to give us a crossover point. And that crossover point will be the IRR. So what's awesome here is that the crossover point of the difference, okay, the IRR of the difference in cash flows of two projects will be the crossover point. And that's an important, very important concept to remember. All right. And if that doesn't make sense just now, it's okay because we're going to walk through this example together. We're going to walk through this question together. And it's really, it's really going to make some sense to you. And there are, there are other videos on Yisma Helps, you know, uh, YouTube channel, on Yisma Helps YouTube channel, in which you can find more information on this. So now that we have that, let's move on and let's try to actually put this into practice. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do now, so we're going to go right here and we're going to do just that. We're going to look at the difference in these two projects. So what you're going to do now, in order to use the incremental cash flow method to find right, the crossover rate right, between these two projects, you're simply going to create a table like this. Sometimes this table will already provide it to you on an exam. In this case, they didn't provide it to you, but it's really, really easy to make. So you're going to look at project A as well, once you've identified the years. Then you're going to look at project B. And then we can just add a quick point right here to highlight the difference between these two cash flows. So we'll do B minus A. Let's move this backwards a little bit. Okay, awesome. What we're going to look at, of course, it's a very important year, year zero, because that's going to highlight the initial investment. Then here we're going to look at year one all the way to infinity. The reason why we're doing this is because we know we're looking at perpetual cash flows. The perpetual cash flows are perpetuities, i.e., these cash flows will last forever. Okay, very important stuff. I want you to remember to remember and understand that. So let's go ahead and let's plug in all these data points into our question. So let's do that. In this case, we have we're at question twenty-one. Perfect. So our Project A and Project B, by the way, I'll make it simple for you. What they mean in this case, because we don't want to, you know, write a bunch of stuff. We're just going to say that Project Beta is Project A, Project Sigma is Project B. So in this case, we have Project A. Here we have Project B, all right? So in this case, we know that Project A, its initial investment is minus $2,500. And for Project B, its initial investment is equal to $3,750. The perpetual cash flows of project A, so from year one to forever, okay, it'll be $1,230. Project B, it'll be $1,695. All right. Now what we need to do here, it's simple. We need to find a difference in their cash flows on a year-to-year -year basis. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we'll notice that B minus A for the initial investment, okay, if I take a step back, Will give you minus twelve hundred fifty, and for the perpetual cash flows, the difference will be one hundred sixty four hundred sixty five. Sorry about that. Four hundred sixty five. So now we have the difference in their cash flows. Okay, this is super awesome. We're actually going to be able to solve this question fairly easily. Done. So we get this. Now that we have that, we could go ahead and solve for our crossover point. So we know that zero, okay, is what we want these two to be equal to. We want the difference between project B and project A to be equal to zero. So what we'll do is we'll do 465, which is our perpetual difference in cash flows, over K, 
which is our IRR, which is the point that we're solving for, minus, minus 1,250. So in other words, it would be plus 1250, but you know, whatever. And in this case, we will get that our K, if we do some quick math, will be 450, 465, sorry. If I said the number, my bad. And that's gonna give us something along the lines of 37.2%. So this is awesome news because now we have our crossover point for these two projects. This is the point at which the NPV of project A will be equal to the NPV of project B. So in this case, you'd be able to solve the question as easily as that. It was literally as simple as that. But what I would like to do, I would like to add a, sl a, slight, um, a slight expansion or a, just a, a better note, uh, just to give you context on, well, what if they wanted to know, well, hey, when is project A bigger what is the NPV of project A bigger than the NPV of project B and vice versa? What we could do is we could actually use a, whatchamacallit, we could use a classic, classic, classic graph that's gonna display the relationship between the IRR and the NPV. And I wanna do that because I really wanna give you some additional context and to give you the tools that are necessary to solve most questions related to the crossover rates. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the time to just draw a quick, quick roof you know, graph to really highlight the relationship between the NPV and the IRR, okay? So on this line here, we're gonna display, okay. And on this line here, we're gonna showcase the NPV, all right? So the first step, the real, the real first step here is always to highlight all of our different points that we have here. Now, what's awesome is that you could actually find the IRR for project A and project B. And you could also know that you have your K for the crossover point. So you have the intersection of these two projects. What we're gonna to wanna to do, is we're gonna to want to add that onto our graph. So the first step is to highlight 37.2. So let's go about that now. It'll make more sense in just a second. So I'll go here and I'll put C as our crossover point. So we'll put this as being 37. Okay. Now, if you want to solve for the IR of project A, it's very simple. You could either do the same little mechanic that we did here. So you do essentially 1230 over K minus minus 2,500, and that's going to give you your K. Or you could just use the classic method of plugging in your initial investment as being 2,500, right, on your calculator, and then putting your CO1 as being 1230 and putting a frequency of like a thousand because it's gonna be a converging series and you're gonna get an okay number. I've made countless videos on that. So that's why I'm not running through it. But what you're gonna find here is that if you solve for K for project A, you're gonna get a K. So an IRR, sorry, I'll kind of erase that. If you solve for the IRR of project A, you're gonna get 49.2%. If you solve for the IRR of project B, Going to get a point of 45.2 percent. Okay, the reason why this is awesome is because you can go ahead and kind of put this here as 45.2 and put this here as 49.2. And this is a very quick way to be able to display the relationship between the two, between the two projects. Now, if you've seen my previous videos as well, is you know that the crossover point is the point at which the NPV of these two projects will be the same. And in this case, NPV of, these, of, the, of the project, right, at 37.2% would actually find value. So we can actually plug this stuff in to actually find the NPV of the project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll take a step back. I'll just draw all calculated for you. We could find the NPV of the project at the point 37.2. So you could find the NPV of both projects. So if you were to do 1230 divided by 0 0.372, do that plus, or I guess minus 2,500, you're gonna get a point of 806. So 806 would be 
the point at which their NPV will be equal to the same. Okay, so that's going to be the point at which their NPV is equal to the same thing. So we could go ahead and maybe write it here. Okay, so 806 would be the point at which their NPV will be equal to the same thing. Now, if you that's not too clear to you, what we're going to do, right? It's going to take this 1230 because we know that's our perpetual cash flow. You're going to divide it by 37.2%. And then you're going to add or subtract essentially your 2500. And that's going to give you the value that you need here. Okay. So this is really as simple as that. Okay. So in that case, what we could figure out is that our crossover point, right, at 37.2%, will be like right here. This will be our crossover point. Okay. What we could do is we could go ahead and plug in the line per project B. This is project B. I could plug in the line for project A. And what's awesome is that now we can generate some really cool takeaways on the two projects. So I'm zooming in a little bit just to really highlight what's going on here. What's going on here is that you notice at any point, I guess I'm trying to make this as small as possible. At any point from 0% all the way to 37.2%, you're going to be able to have a scenario. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this cute where the NPV of, call it, I believe, project B will be greater than the NPV of project A. And of course, point C right here, the intersection between the two, is a point at which the NPV of project B is equal to the NPV of project A. And what's awesome here is that the point, all the points within this area, okay, so in this area here, are points at which the NPV of project A will be greater than the NPV of project B. This is an important, important, important takeaway because that's what the crossover rate's all about. So if we take a step back, what you notice is that any point from 0% all the way to 37.2%. We have, an, we have opportunities at which the NPV of project B will be greater. However, any point from the crossover rate all the way to 49.2%, we're gonna have a point at which the NPV of project A will be greater than the NPV of project B. And that's exactly what this scenario tried to highlight, okay? I tried to highlight the relationship between two projects. And I tried to really give you a comprehensive view on what's going on. And that's really all the tools you would need on an exam to solve for any crossover rate question. You know that we need to use the incre incremental cash flow method to find the difference between project B and project A, because we understand that the difference between these two cash flows, right, for the entirety of, the, of these two projects, well, we understand that that difference, right, if we equate it to zero and we solve for the IRR of that difference, we're going to get a crossover point. Then once we plot the IRR of one project of both projects plus a crossover point, we're able to display the relationship between these two projects are able to display, well, hey, when is project A greater than project B? When is project B greater than project A? And for companies in the real world and for people, it gives them an opportunity to really evaluate, well, listen, where am I within this relationship? What project does really works for me? So I hope that this gave you a comprehensive view or at least a, a, you know, a start to understanding what to do in these types of scenarios. And yeah, listen, I, I hope it helps. Really, that's, that's, that's why I'm here, you know, I'm trying to give you guys, uh, you guys and girls and however you want to identify uh, an opportunity to really just, you know, be empowered, be inspired, learn uh, finance, learn uh, commerce stuff in a, in a fun way. So yeah, hopefully this helps. I'll see you in another one. If you want more content, you can go on ismahelps.com. If you need uh, different views on different topics, you can go on YouTube. I think I have like four or six videos on just the idea of the IRR and crossover rate. So hopefully those videos help you out. Yeah, and I'll see you on the next one. So bye-bye.